Hey everybody, it's Jim here, and it's been a little while since I filmed a video like this, but for this guitar, there was no way I was going to pass up the opportunity to do so. This is a 2022 Fender Japan Takashi Kato Signature Stratocaster. We're going to start off by putting this guitar on the bench, taking a real close look at it. We're going to be giving it a full playthrough through the Music Man amp and the Tone King. I'm going to give you my overall thoughts on the guitar. But first of all... If there's something that you're interested in in particular, as far as the details or a section of the video you'd like to go to, feel free to use the timestamps that will be provided down below. But we're going to get started in our customary fashion by putting this on the scale and seeing how much it weighs. Now there are very few guitars that on paper have every single specification that I could want on it. This guitar is one of them. The first being the Paradise Blue here is absolutely gorgeous. It's basically kind of an aged Lake Placid Blue. Depending on the light, it does look a little blue, a little bit more light, looks like Ocean Turquoise, darker light, almost like a Sherwood Green. Super cool, but the color wasn't really the selling point to me. This is Fender Japan's version of a thin skin nitro cellulose finish. So it's going to wear very nicely and naturally. And there is no relicking to be found on it the way it should be. I love that about this instrument. It's an alder body. We do have the pure vintage American made hardware starting with the tremolo system and it goes all the way up to the tuners. We'll hit those in a second. And then the pickups are specially voiced Takashi Katos. We will be taking the strings off and looking underneath the pick guard just for, you know, documentation sake. So we'll be able to get a closer look at those. But outside of that, pretty standard vintage Stratocaster appointments. Do the old spinner Ernie first, we'll see. No markings or stickers at all inside of the body cavity. This is only routed for single coils. That's totally cool in my book. I don't need anything else from a vintage Stratocaster. You do have your CTS pots. You do have your Fender USA spec five-way selector switch on it. You have two gray bobbin pickups here on the neck and the middle, and then a black bobbin on the bridge. That's actually pretty cool. As far as the wiring itself goes and the solder job, it is top notch as to be expected. But no actual markings or labelings on the pickups themselves. Now I mentioned that this was exactly what I wanted spec wise and part of that has to do with the fact that this has a seven and a quarter vintage radius on a rosewood fingerboard. I adore that. These frets feel very smooth and wow, these are really well rolled ends here on the fingerboard itself very very nicely done not always the case to this level absolutely wonderful let's check the frets these frets are narrow tall in case you're curious And as I become used to here, the fretwork is phenomenal. These are almost perfectly level frets. One thing worth mentioning here on the back of the neck, that's pretty cool. This is a satin nitro finish on the neck, which is something unique to this model that I haven't seen on many of the other Fender Japan stuff. And real quick, I'm gonna measure the thickness of this neck. Point eight one at the first fret, so definitely a little skinny there. Point nine six at the twelfth fret. Oh, that is heaven for me. And finally, the headstock, no expense spared here as well. You have the pure vintage tuners. These are not locking, but these are the ones that come on the high-end production American models. And finally, the 65 Transition logo. All right, so my initial impressions of this guitar, this is as good as it gets from Fender Japan as far as their modern production goes. This is a stellar, stellar specimen. The neck feels great. I cannot wait to sit and play with this thing. But there's one thing I wanted to go over because you might be wondering, 
This guitar is a nitro finish and it ships in a gig bag. Is it a different kind of gig bag? Maybe a higher end one? Or is it this typical one that comes in some of the Mexican ones as well? Sadly, it is. This is not fitting for a guitar of this quality and it is kind of disappointing. I do understand in Japan, they use a lot of public transit. So a hard case is not always ideal. If you're ever there, you'll notice people walking around with instruments on their back. It's a very regular thing. But I did want to give credit to the people at Kinko's Music because when I opened up the gig bag, the guitar wasn't just naked inside of it. It was wrapped up inside of this cloth. That was a very nice touch that I can't think of many other places that would have done that. So let's get started with the sound demos. We're going to be using the Music Man 212 HD for our clean channel. And then when I want to spice things up a little bit, we're going to go to the Tone King Gremlin and a super aggressive sound. If we do go down our route, will be from the Benson preamp. So let's get to it. Now normally when we get to this section of the video where I go over the playability, the feel, the tones, and my overall thoughts on the instrument, it can get a little bit long in the tooth. I know that. But today, 
It's not gonna be like that because I don't need to say much about this guitar, although I could probably talk your ear off for hours. That's how much I really love this guitar. The neck on this, for two reasons, is outstanding. The first being the nitro satin finish on this. Feels much more different than the, the satinish kind of finish that comes on the American Professionals and then the satinish kind of finish that comes on Mexican and other Japanese guitars because there's no nitrocellulose involved with that process. This feels so fast, so smooth, but also remains kind of vintage feeling because the second thing I love about this neck is the way that it tapers. I was a little worried when I read the initial literature on this guitar because it was based on the actual 65 that Takashi used and it labeled it as a slim neck. I thought that maybe it would kind of remain slim in the way that the JV Stratocaster that I've played the majority of my life does. This tapers beautifully and it really beefs up the further up the neck you get. For somebody like me who does play a lot of funk and a lot of rhythm work higher up, this is a dream once you're getting into this area of the guitar. Tones of the guitar kind of surprised me a little bit. It was a little bit darker than I had anticipated, but that's a welcome thing. Sometimes it's easier to make up for that, especially with a single coiled instrument. So with the Tone King, I just turned the tone knob up a little bit and that settled that out. It sounds huge. And I can also attribute the fact that this guitar sounds so good acoustically and through the amp, in my opinion, because this has no compromises in any of the hardware or the important parts where the strings are actually going through or touching parts of the guitar. Pure vintage, this is from the American Vintage line of the tuners, a real bow nut that is cut to perfection. I had no problems with tuning stability. And this is the Pure Vintage 65 tremolo system that comes standard on the American issues as well. I, I guys, this guitar is a absolute treasure. I'm kind of depressed over it because I know that this is not something that if everybody who watched this video wanted to go out and purchase right now, you couldn't. And that, that really kind of bums me out. I'll get into that a little bit later in the video, but my overall final thoughts on this guitar, this is an absolute winner. It is a steal at this price. I, I can't say enough good things about it. I adore this instrument. However, before I make my plea to Fender America to please, please listen to me and take some advice regarding this guitar and potential future models that are going to be made available in the United States for Americans regularly, I did want to address a question that was posed to me about this exact guitar. I wanted to know where to buy it. Well, obviously, I did find a place to buy it, and it was old Kinko Music in Kyoto, Japan. I highly recommend that you go directly to the source. You will see a thousand of these. Well, maybe not a thousand, but you'll see a lot of them listed on eBay. That does not mean that's how many are available. Those are all going to be kind of third-party people shopping around with the same guitar and hoping that you purchase it through them so they can go to the shop and buy it that way. When you buy from a place like Kinko Music, they do everything right. This guitar was packed to perfection. Kaz, the guy that I speak to over there, I had talked to him basically once this was announced. I was like, I want that guitar. What are we talking about? Let's, let's make this happen. Constant support, constantly letting me know updates when it was going to be coming in, when it was going to be shipping. When they got the guitar in, he sent me like 60 pictures of this thing. They were having a little argument in the office, I guess, about what exactly to take of this color. Some thought it was much more greenish, some thought it was bluish. It was just a funny thing. Very relatable guy, very down to earth guy. I can't recommend them enough. I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video. If you're interested in anything from Vendor Japan, don't go on their reverb, go right to the shop itself it supports them more and you will get a better price trust me on that one but as a whole these guitars are attainable just be careful where you buy them there are other great shops you can get them from not all of them will be willing to send them to you this was a b stock guitar so you know with the, the laws and all that kind of fun stuff you're not allowed to technically buy these things new from japan as they intended for the japanese domestic market so keep that in mind but in the off chance that anybody from Fender ever watches this video, I'm going to try to give you some constructive criticism here. The fact that this guitar was available for less than American Professional 2. Less than the Joe Strummer guitar, real rosewood, nitro, thin skin finish on it, American vintage hardware all over it. This guitar 
can be done, you guys. The real seven and a quarter inch radius, forget that. The American Originals, there's nothing really original about it. And this is gonna sound really harsh, but think about it, it's true. What if Gibson made their original guitars based on the vintage ones, because that's what you tout the American Originals as, with a compound radius neck? Do you think the community would be okay with that? No, they would be furious. They would be burning Gibson at the stake for doing that. So I don't understand why you guys can't just make exact vintage replicas. You used to do it with the American vintage. You still do it sometimes with guitars like this. Just please, please, not all of us want the modern features of them. Sometimes it's nice to have them, but sometimes we looked up to these players and we liked the feel of the older instruments, and in my case, the JV Strat, all vintage specs on that thing too. Just, just make it an option, I beg of you, because this is a treasure, and also make some sort of version. Doesn't even need to be the Takashi Kato for the American market. Make something that is like this guitar, that is to this quality standard available in America. I, I, I know you're never gonna be able to do it at the same price point that I got this for. This was less than an American Professional 2 out the door by a few hundred dollars, mind you. So the value is just insane, but if you could at least provide the model to begin with i mean it's a step in the right direction and also not every nitro guitar needs to come pre-relict but all that aside this takashi kato strat is the absolute real deal if you have the opportunity to get one of these or to try one of these in person if you're in japan i i would absolutely recommend that you do that but that's going to be where we're going to end today's video if you found this video useful helpful or entertaining you can leave a like i would appreciate that you could also subscribe that kind of helps, I think. Comment, let me know what you think. If you like the vintage style, or if you're more of a modern person, I know I'm in the minority with that, but not even the Fender Custom Shop offer many guitars with seven and a quarter inch radius. I just, it really just makes me scratch my head. But alas, save it for a different video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. I'm gonna go play this guitar.